everybody. Good to meet you again. We welcome to Stream of Love by Veronica Naidu channel and uh, we pray that the stream of love that flows from the throne room of God will immerse you in his presence and nourish you through his word. Amen. So today we are going to dive into the book of Psalms. It's one of my most favorite book in the Bible. I grew up reading the Psalms daily and um, it has a very special place in my heart because every time you look at the Psalms, it kind of speaks and relates to what you're experiencing from day to day, from your thought process, to your emotions, even to your life. So this book of Psalms is very special to me and I'm glad that today we are going to look into uh, a short study uh, taken from Psalms 143 verse 10, 143 verse 10. Now, it reads, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Now, we are only looking at Psalms 143 verse 10a. Okay, there's more to this uh, verse, but we are just going to focus on 10a. So, I repeat again, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Now, over the weekend, um, you know, the first thing when I get up is like, I, the first thing I do is spend a few minutes with the Lord, you know, kneeling down, just talking to him and, uh, you know, hear what he wants to speak to me. And every morning, you know, it's a desire that he will speak to me every day into situations or just expressing his assurance and love to me and over the past weekend the word that he taught me was teach me taken from psalms 143 verse 10. now when we talk about teach me basically it's like a personal asking you know and when you look at the word teach in in hebrew itself it says um to teach means it can be meaning to say, to shoot, to aim, to direct. Okay. And then there's another aspect of it where there are two words which are attached to this word called teach in the Hebrew language. One is yare, um, which is directed teaching. And another one is lamed, um, instruct, teach, train with authority or with expertise. Now, Today, we are looking at this word called Lamed, L-A-M-A-D, okay, Lamed, which is instruct, teach, train with authority or expertise. Now, in this Psalms, we see, it's a Psalms of David, it says that, uh, teach me to do your will. It's a personal asking. It is not something that is being enforced or expected or demanded, but it is something that is desired of. You know, this is what I desire. You know, teach me, O oh Lord. It, it, it's something that you desire. And it's, it's not only just a personal asking. If you relate it to Psalms 42 verse 1, it speaks that as the deer pants or longs or desires for the waters, so my soul pants, longs or desires for you. It is that form of an asking. Okay, it's not just a personal asking, as I said, in reference to Psalms 42 verse 1. It's a longing. It's a desire. You know, meaning to say you come before the Lord asking, you know, the Holy Spirit to be your teacher, to teach you. Because he is the master teacher. And only he can teach you and me to do his will. Because, you see, he's the one who choreographs the entire plan, okay, the plan of his will for us. And he's the author who alters what is being destined for us, what has been destined, and what are his purposes. Everything is being written in his purpose, in his will, in his plan. So, when you are the author, if, if you had ever written anything, you will know for sure that it's the author who knows why he or she is writing that particular story or writing the particular poem in that angle that he deems its best fit. Or there might be an angle that the author wants his readers to look at, so he will direct his readers into that angle. 
get what I mean? So it's the author who knows what is the story all about. The readers may not know what is the end of the story unless they skip all the first portions and rush to the end part. But even then, the only one who holds the secret to that book or biography or that poem or that, that movie script is the author himself. So similarly, only the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, he knows what is the will for your life. And when we ask of the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us, to asking him, teach me to do your will. When we ask unto the Lord, teach me to do your will, it's the Holy Spirit who instructs in our spirit, in our heart, in our minds of what is it is to be and what it is not to be. So if you look at this, it says that for without a desire, it is rather, I would say, impossible to draw near to God. Now, to draw near to God, we, we, we park aside Teach me to do your will. Okay, we just pack it aside. If we, we talk about having a relationship, a communication with the Lord, a bonding with the Lord. You need to desire it. If you do not desire it, you're not going to work your way towards it. In life, for many aspects of our life, we want to get ourselves better, we want to work towards success. It starts with a desire that is being deposited within us and we start to feed it and the more we feed it we make efforts deliberate efforts uh, towards the desire that we have so that we can make our desires into fruition you will be able to manifest it in reality now similarly in line with that when we desire of the lord what happens is he teaches us on how to draw close to him and in drawing close to him he teaches us to do his will now without drawing close to him how is he going to communicate what is his plan or purpose or will for your life there must be a relationship a bond that instructs you and instructs me on what is expected and what is not expected of us that it's what happens usually in a relationship when you draw close to your family your partner your husband your friend your son your daughter um, what happens is they tend to converse with you are uh, their secrets or they converse with you about their thoughts their plans they are not going to converse with anyone who just walks across uh, bypasses them or they are just a, a, a high and a by kind of a friend. If it is a high and a by kind of a relationship, people are not going to invest themselves into you. Logical, right? And similarly, it applies to your relationship with God. Now, although the psalmist starts with saying, teach me to do your will for you are my God, it, it starts from this root of desiring the Lord. He desires to do uh, the will of God and that is why he's asking, teach me. So today, even as we stand to, to understand about this scripture, Psalms 143 verse 10a, where are you standing in your relationship with God? Are you at a point where you it becomes a mundane relationship? day in and day out or is it a point where you are desiring of the Lord so that in your desire of him or for him you're able to ask him to teach you about doing his will because unless you desire of him this particular verse that speaks about teach me to do your will will come to a standpoint that until this door is open you will not be permitted to enter him. And the door to open is desiring the Lord. And how do you desire him? Is it always that we go before him with our laundry list of uh, petitions or with prayer requests? Or is it that we go before him just desiring him? When was the last time that you entered into his presence, entered his presence with no prayer request there? 
but just entering to tell him, Lord, I just came to say, I love you. I appreciate you. And I just want to take a few moments to just, you know, uh, embrace your love in my life, embrace your goodness, to, to, to worship you for who you are and what you are. And that is the beauty of a relationship, of having intimacy with the Lord. One thing that I've learned in my life is, I would say many a times, I do have my times of prayer with the Lord when it's, uh, you know, it's times of just prayer, praying for people or situations or, or needs. But if I can uh, put a comparison for my, to myself, I would say that in comparison to praying for needs, the moments that I enter his presence to just love him is, is I would say, it's comparatively higher. Why do I say that? Because when the Lord created us, he created us to worship him, to desire of him. Now, the, the Bible says he knows all of our needs. And yes, we need to pray in the name of the Lord. But desiring of him is, is something intimate. You know, it's just like a husband and wife relationship or a relationship with even your parents or with your siblings. Every time you go to them, if you just go to them because you need something of them, it day in and day out, it, you know, it, it becomes like it's, it's more of a, a giving kind of relationship, meaning to say you go to them for them to give you something and for you to get something out of them. And eventually, if you're the person who has been giving all the time, you know, deep down in your heart, you will feel that, hmm, they look for me only when they need me something. When was the last time they just sat with me just to watch a movie together, have fun times together, just catch up, you know, just, just sit down and chillax and relax and talk about things without anything needing from me? Have you gone through that moment? Now, if you have, you will understand what am I trying to say. When we go before the Lord, if we are always going with petition, it's good to go before him with a prayer request and petition. That is what even the scripture says, you know, bring your petition before me. But I'm talking about when you want to develop an intimacy with the Lord, when you want to come to this point as what David says in Psalms 143 verse 10, a teach me to do your will. Before you can arrive at that point to say, teach me to do your will, you need to just walk into his presence and desire of him. And when you desire, that is the secret to when the Lord himself, the Holy Spirit will be able to deposit and instruct you on how to do his will. Because till you desire an intimate walk with the Lord, this thing about doing his will, it, it, it kind of like takes a back seat. Because until and unless you desire of the Lord, you will not be desiring to do his will. The first thing is desiring of him. So today, I just want to leave this thought with you. Where do you stand in desiring of the Lord? Has it always become a mundane routine of just standing before him with your petitions and, you know, just studying the Bible because you need to study the Bible, going to church because you need to go to church. Otherwise, you feel guilty. You feel guilt stricken. Oh, I've not gone to church today. And because you want to escape from that guilt, you just do it um, as a routine. Is, has it all become mundane? Even as we are at the mid of this month, you know, we are almost coming to the end of the first five months of this year. I just want to stir your heart to just ask you to, you know, just do a check within you about you having your relationship with the Lord. Has it become a mundane routine or is it become something that you desire of him? And if you are desiring of him, I pray that you will ask even in Psalms 143 verse 10, a reads, teach me to do your will O oh god you know that's more to what the scripture says um we will look at it uh, god willing at another time but today what i want to put before you is desire of him desire of him so that he can instruct you he can teach you and not only that he will be able to train you with his authority and expertise but even before all this teaching and instructing and training can come into play, desiring of him for who he is and what it is, is the 
core of the matter, the most important and fundamental of a walk with the Lord. So I pray that you in this month will take time to pause, to evaluate, to check, do a check for yourself about your intimate relationship with the Lord. Or is it just a mundane relationship? Or is it a relationship that you desire more of it? God bless you and we will see you again soon. Goodbye.